why hello. Um, I'm going to share this link because nobody's watching right now. Um, but I'm here at NCPH 2014 in beautiful Monterey, California, talking about our project, the Humanities Matter Tour and Web Series. I'm Ryan, and uh, let's just share this link out so people can actually join us. I don't know how to do this. Links. Wonderful. This is really exciting live streaming right now, watching me stare blankly at a computer. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's been shared. So, for people that are <laughs> watching the archive, which which realistically probably isn't going to happen, but um, there's some weird delay going on here. But the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series is a project started by the Maker Bus team, which I'm a part of. Maker Bus, Asport by name, uh, and Alex Gill, who's the technology librarian at at CUNY and a group in the United States called the Four Humanities Research Collective. And what we're proposing is, in the summer of 2015, we're going to be driving across North America, creating a web series about the role of the humanities in the 21st century, talking about why in, in an age of cutbacks and scarcity and austerity should governments and communities still consider funding the arts and humanities. So, oh, we have a viewer. Wow, this is exciting. Hello, viewer. Welcome to my first uh, live stream. Uh, oh, we have two viewers. Wow, this is very exciting. So, I am in the exhibit hall of the Conference Center at NCPH 2014, and I am here doing a number of things today, talking about our project called the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series, which, with the goal of touring across North America, creating a web documentary about the importance of the humanities in the 21st century. And I'm also here issuing the Spicy History Challenge. And what is the Spicy History Challenge, you might be asking? Well, the Spicy History Challenge involves these guys right here. So I'm asking for historians to come down to the exhibit hall and talk to me about their research or their work or even their passions for two minutes. But before that two minutes starts, I need people to take a big bite of this jalapeno pepper. And then I will be recording the process and we'll be putting all the videos up on our Humanities Matter YouTube channel, which will be coming in the following days. And at the end of the two minutes, I will treat you to the sweet relief of some coconut oil, which will help cleanse the palate of the fire. So if you are interested in come taking the Spicy History Challenge, or if you know anyone that might be interested, send them on down to the Exhibition Hall. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're doing a lot of strange things down here today. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. 
Um, so a little bit about me, in, as I don't know who, who you are, lone viewer. Um, my name is Ryan Hunt. I'm a public history graduate student at the University of Western Ontario. And I often do non-traditional things. Um, I'm part of a project called the Maker Bus, based out of London, Ontario. And what we've done is we bought a used school bus, and we're turning it into the Canada's first uh, mobile makerspace and technology education classroom. So we're converting the bus into a classroom on wheels and, and preaching something that we like to call parking lot learning, where we mobilize learning and take it to libraries, schools, community groups, and deliver outside-of-the-box educational content. Um, and one of the ways we're doing that is through the Humanities Matter Bus Tour web series. It's kind of an extension of what we're doing with the Maker Bus and taking it on to a, a larger stage because all, all of the, the Maker Bus team, uh, I myself am one of them, there's also Beth Compton and Kim Martin. Hello, we have another viewer. Welcome. I'm in the exhibition hall. I'm talking about the importance of the humanities in the 21st century. I have lots of multimedia activities down here to do, so if you know anyone that's interested, send them on down to the exhibition hall in NCPH. Two viewers. I'm pretty excited about this. I thought I'd be talking to no one this morning on my screen. Also, viewers, there is chat. Um, if you guys want to leave some thoughts or comments, or say, hey, your mic is really bad, the video looks horrible, just, just let me know. Give me some feedback, because because we're flying a little bit blind here. This is our first Google live stream. Oh, nice. I just turned up the volume on my computer so I can hear any notifications that may come my way. Um, yeah, so I was talking about the Maker Bus. And the Maker Bus is in London, Ontario, Canada. And we're Canada's first mobile makerspace and technology education classroom. So we're trying to mobilize learning. Um, and a lot of what we've been doing is focused on science and technology, but we're really also interested in promoting the humanities and the importance of them, And because we're all from, from history backgrounds. Um, something we're planning in September of 2014 is something called a History Harvest, and the History Harvest was pioneered at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and we have some contacts there, and we, we were trying to bring the History Harvest up north to Canada, and for those that aren't aware of what a History Harvest is, it's a series of public digital history workshops uh, where people can bring either an historic object, a photograph, a memory, and they can work with historians to help digitize that and share it online. Oh, we lost all our viewers. I've driven them all away. Oh, we have a new viewer. Hello, new viewer. This is really strange. Um, yeah, so I'm down here in the exhibition hall of the Monterey Conference Center, and I'm asking people to come down and talk about why they think the humanities matter. Um, I have lots of fun multimedia things to do down here. You can record a podcast. You can make a video. Um, we're having a good time. A good time will be had by all. Oh, we have another viewer. Look at that. Wonderful. And all of this is going to be archived. Hi. Archived down on YouTube for posterity. Um, I'm limited to a mere eight hours of recording today, according to YouTube. So um, I won't be able to do too long of a day, but we're going to get several hours under our belt before the day is over. So welcome. Um, I'm really looking forward to have people doing the Spicy History Challenge today. And the Spicy History Challenge involves these jalapenos. I'm asking for historians to come down to the exhibition hall, talk about their research or work for two minutes. Um, but before they do that, I want them to eat a jalapeno pepper. And these videos are going to be recorded and uploaded to our Humanities Matter YouTube channel. Um, breaking news, internet world. I myself will be doing the first Spicy History Challenge at 10.30. Um, so come on down to the exhibition hall and watch me maybe make a complete and total fool of myself. Maybe, maybe not. Jalapeno peppers aren't necessarily that spicy. Um, so who knows? I'm just going to tweet out about that right now. Live streaming, watching someone tweet. Very interesting. All right, it has been tweeted. So, let's see how many viewers we're doing, we're having right now. Still one viewer. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, I hope this isn't the, the most boring YouTube channel you've ever watched. It very well could be. Um, so, 
guess I talk about what I think of Monterey so far. I've only been in Monterey for about less than 12 hours, really. Probably been in Monterey uh, about nine hours now. Um, and granted, about four hours of that was spent sleeping. But so far, I'm really blown away by how beautiful it is here in Monterey. Uh, I'm from the west coast of Canada originally, so I have an affinity for the western seaboard. And um, I really miss being near the ocean. And so far, Monterey is just staggeringly beautiful from the flowers to the ocean to the, the Spanish-inspired architecture. And it's a pretty nice place to have a conference here. Hello, viewer number two. So we're here talking about the Humanities Matter bus tour and web series. Um, and I'll be live streaming all day from the exhibition hall, so come down. I'm looking for some guests for my live stream. You can sit down and, and talk about what it is you do with public history and why you're here, and maybe we can start talking about why people think the humanities matter, because that's what we're here to do, is start to spread engagement, to get people talking, and, and to hopefully make a, a documentary web series that is pretty exciting and engaging. So come on down and say hi. All right, just checking all the social media, seeing how we're doing. So less than an hour until I do the first Spicy History Challenge. Um, I recommend people come down and watch because I, I have no idea how spicy these jalapeno peppers are. I um, I spent a year living and working in Korea, and um, chili peppers are a common side dish there. Um, they're, they're, they have a green pepper. They're, they're similar to, to jalapeno. Um, they're, they're an unripened red pepper, and people will often eat them with a, a fermented bean paste, um, and um, just eat them, eat them whole. And it's really interesting because you don't really know how sp you, something about peppers is that you have no way of telling how spicy a pepper is before you eat it, um, which is why a lot of professional chefs will, will taste every pepper that they, they put into a dish. Um, so in Korea, sometimes you get one that was, was barely spicy, spicier than a, a green pepper, like a capsaicin. Um, and, and then other times you'd eat one that would just knock you right on your feet, off your feet. Um, and I remember I was on a beach in, um, on the east coast of Korea camping, and these two really, really lovely Korean gentlemen um, offered, offered us to share dinner with us. And they had these peppers that were just like hellfire. And um, they thought it was hilarious that I was just dying every time I tried to eat one and they were they were doing their, their bravado thing and showing how, how little the spice affected them but that, that memory really sticks with me. So for people who may be new to our web live stream uh, we're here in the exhibition hall of the conference center here at NCPH 2014 talking about our project the Humanities Matter bus tour and web series. Um, our goal with this project is to take a trip across North America in 2015, in the summer of 2015, and to create a documentary web series about the role of humanities in the 21st century. Um, so that's why I'm here. We're trying to lay the groundwork this year, so by next summer we're, we're all ready to go. So uh, things, we'll be doing a number of live streams like this. We'll be, we'll be having a pretty wide presence trying to talk to as many people as possible about our project and get more people on board because we're looking for stops, we're looking for people to help organize um, days on the trip, and we're looking for people to come and take the trip with us. Our, our plan is to buy a, a used school bus and, and load it as full of people as we can possibly make it um, and have people jump on and jump off and, and have all these different historians and lovers of the humanities um, take a really active role in the project. So, so come on down and say hi. We're down in the exhibition hall. You can be on this very live stream. I'm offering everyone their 15 minutes of fame. It doesn't get any better than that. It really doesn't. Um, oh, hello. Good, how are you doing today? So, I'm here with a new project. Mm -hmm. And I apologize, I took a plane here so I couldn't really bring any signage. So I had to make my, make my own signage. Um, my name is Ryan, and I'm here with a project called the Humanities Matter Tour and Web Series. And what we're doing is in 2015, we're arranging a trip across North America, and in the process we'll be filming a web documentary about the role of the humanities in the 21st century. Um, so we have, I think, about 15 stops planned. We're starting in New York, uh, West Virginia, no, regular Virginia, and then we're ending in Victoria, B.C. on the west coast of Canada. So we're going to be snaking all our way across. and. Um, 
We're asking people to just come down and talk about why they think the humanities matter. If you want to write a little post-it note about why you think the humanities matter, leave it on the table. I'll be taking pictures so we can put it on our on our website. And um, also, for the adventurous, we're offering something called a spicy history challenge today, in which I'm asking people to talk about their research or passion for history for two minutes. But before they start talking, I'm asking them to take a big bite of a jalapeno pepper. Um, and then we'll be recording these videos and putting them on our YouTube channel. I'll be doing the first one at 10.30 today. Um, and we also have a big thing of coconut oil for when you're done, or coconut yeah, oil for when you're done. It'll help soothe the heat in your mouth. And um, we're also live streaming everything we do here today. Um, hello. We have one viewer at the moment. <laughs> and we also have a pop-up podcast studio here for anyone that wants to have, record a podcast about why they think oh. these guys matter. And as an added bonus for people to do the Spicy History Challenge, I will take a picture of them while they're eating the pepper, and you get to take a picture of yourself home with you. So that's kind of the, <laughs> the weird wow. thing that we're doing here on, on this table. It's a little, uh, it's a little different, yeah, it's but a different quirky. can be fun. Yeah, it's a little quirky, definitely. No, good on the spicy <laughs> They're only jalapeno peppers. Yeah, I, I couldn't find anything spicier at the Trader Joe's today. So. Oh, no uh -huh. habanero? No habanero, oh, yeah. No. It might be just out of season, I think, is, is the problem. Okay. So who knows? Sometimes jalapenos aren't that bad. That's true. Right? <laughs> well, they're not they're hotter when they're raw. That's true. They are hotter when they're raw. And um, I have a friend that's a chef, and he says there's no way to tell how spicy a pepper is before you actually bite into it. So when he's cooking, he always takes a little bit of each one to make sure it's not going to knock the sock off. So it could be a dud or it could be a grenade. Yeah, that's interesting. Orange yeah. County. So when are you doing the spicy uh, I'm doing it at 1030. Oh, okay. Um, Do you have people volunteered already? No, not yet. Oh. Well, maybe a couple, like tentative. Oh, um, okay. Uh, I've only been here, I got here at 1 last yesterday morning, so I haven't really had a lot of time to recruit people yet, but hopefully the, the words were filtered out, so if you know anyone that's up for a challenge, send them my way. I'd appreciate it. Okay. We have five peppers. I'm hoping to get five people today. Okay. All right. Take care. Nice to meet you all. And we just had people at our table. Um, that was exciting. So hopefully we're going to get some people sent our way in the near future. Um, and that would be really fun. And like I said, I'll be doing the first Spicy History Challenge today at 10.30, which will be a good time. All right, so, live stream. How are you today? Well, in case you didn't know, um, there is a chat feature on the live stream, so if anybody wants to type in and then tell me how they are, who, if they're where they're watching from, that, that would be great. Um, a little bit of audience inter interaction is always good. If not, I'll just keep rambling. Um, as I have a drink from my beautiful DHSI water bottle. For those that aren't familiar with DHSI, it's the Digital Humanities Summer Institute. Uh, it's a week-long workshop in Victoria, BC. Beautiful Victoria, BC, uh, the University of Victoria and it offers uh, digital humanities classes for grad students, professors, community members. Uh, you can learn anything from text encoding to how to use a 3D printer to things like conflict management and project organization. Um, and DHSI is a big supporter of the Humanities Matter web series. In fact, next summer we will be ending our tour at DHSI, and I believe it'll be in Malaspino, or sorry, Vancouver Island University um, next summer. So, I'll continue live streaming. Mm. I'm seeing a lovely hotel. Um, quite pleased with it. Rented a car. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll do a little update for people that may be new to, to the live stream. I'm here with the Humanities Matter web bus tour and web series. My name is Ryan Hunt, and uh, we're here talking about why the humanities matter in the 21st century. And uh, if you would like to come down and be on our live stream, record a podcast, do a spicy history video, um, please join me. It looks like people are starting to filter into the exhibition hall now. It's going to be pretty exciting pretty soon. Um, oh, I see someone with some camera equipment, some proper camera equipment. 
uh, everything at our table is a little bit uh, jury rigged today, but all the equipment's come a long way, so we're we're making the best with what we have. Um, yeah. I'm resisting the urge to just do nothing but make funny faces at the web camera for eight hours. Uh, that, that's kind of what I'm interested in. So let's talk more about the Humanities Matter bus tour and web series. Um, so this project started last summer at uh, the Digital Humanities 2013 conference in Nebraska, Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, sorry. Um, and it came out of several conversations talking about how Scholars can better mobilize engagement, and we ended up deciding that one of the best ways to mobilize learning is to literally mobilize it, to make it mobile, and we talked about planning a, a tour to connect with a wider audience about our passions, and it grew out of there. So together with myself, Beth Compton, Kim Martin, and Alex Gill, um, sorry, Alex Hill, um, we decided to launch this project. and. And in the winter of 2014, we launched a Kickstarter campaign to help fund our tour. Um, and this Kickstarter was really successful. I was really blown away by the supporters. We raised uh, $10,000 in one month to help fund this project. Um, unfortunately, our funding goal was 15000 And with Kickstarter, if you don't raise 100% of your targeted funding, um, you, you don't retain any of that money. Um, but for us, it, the success of the Kickstarter really drove home that there is support for this project, and we're going to keep it going. Um, so instead of doing the big tour this summer, we decided to spend a year building community, creating content, getting people excited about the humanities, and then we're relaunching the project next summer with the aid of, of some grants. Um, so that's our, our goal, and I'm here at NCPH 2014 in beautiful Monterey, California, talking, uh, talking to people about the humanities and why they matter. <sighs> you know what? I'm going to retweet something. I just retweeted something. Twitter live stream. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that Bethanina Whiskey was here. That's very exciting. She's also been a big supporter of our project, so hopefully we can get her on the live stream. That would be really exciting. Um, and I'm looking for guests for the live stream, so if you feel like being uh, famous on the internet, come down and uh, have a chat with us. It'll be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And 45 minutes until it's time for me to do the first Spicy History Challenge. I'll be both live streaming it and videotaping it, so it'll live in posterity on our YouTube channel. Um, because really, uh, I don't do enough strange things on the internet, and I could do more, stand to do more, really get out there. Um, yeah, so let's... Uh, oh, I'm going to share the link once again, because it never hurts. Whoa, I just briefly clicked on my own live stream, and that was a bit of a an inception moment. Best not to watch yourself on your own live stream, because there's a bit of a delay, and it, it's very strange. I'm going to send out a link. All right, so we're back. We are back. So it's too bad that it doesn't say who these viewers are, because I'm really interested who my one viewer is that's been sticking it out with me. Let's see what time is it? Oh, I'm on the West Coast now. That's awesome. I'm used to being on the East Coast, so I'm usually making 
mental subtractions about what time it is out west, but uh, 9.49 a.m. So I wonder who... I wonder who it could be. Maybe I know them, maybe I don't. Um, yeah, we're just hanging out on the live stream, waiting for some guests to arrive, do the Spicy History Challenge. In fact, I'm going to start prepping for the Spicy History Challenge. Now, as you probably know, um, when eating spicy food, oil-based yeah. foods do the best job of cutting through the heat because yeah. the, the part of the pepper that is spicy is oil-based, so water-based things do not cut through it. So, hopefully, this delightful Trader Joe's coconut oil will uh, help cool the heat. I'm going to give it a little taste test to see how it is. Coconut oil in America is much cheaper than it is in Canada, which is exciting. Mmm. Coconutty. That's pretty good. I want to eat that with a spoon. In fact, I did. Mmm. That's really good. God. So, that's the reason to come to the Spicy History Challenge. You get a spoonful of delicious coconut oil. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, and just so people know, I have a bunch of these spoons, so I won't be... You won't have to share a spoon with me. That would be strange. I lost my viewer. Very sad. Probably because they're running down here to get delicious, delicious coconut oil. Oh, I have another viewer. Welcome, viewer. Um, we're here talking about why the humanities matter at the NCPH 2014 conference. Uh, that's the National Council for Public History Conference 2014 here in beautiful Monterey, California. And in 45... Oh, Sorry, 40 minutes, I'll be doing the first Spicy History Challenge. And that's a challenge for historians to talk about their research, research, work, or passion for two minutes after eating one of these delightful jalapeno peppers. Um, jalapeno peppers maybe aren't that spicy. That's the thing about jalapenos. Sometimes they're very spicy. Sometimes they're not very spicy at all. So um, join me. Join me in the conference, the exhibition hall. Soon we're, we'll be having some guests. It'll be a lot of fun. A lot of fun indeed. It's the morning. It's a little slow here. But it's going to pick up. So, my name is Ryan Hunt, and I'm a graduate student in public history at the University of, oh, sorry, at Western University in beautiful London, Ontario. And when not doing my graduate studies, I'm also part of the MakerBus. Um, find more about us at makerbus.ca. Uh, and the Maker Bus is Canada's first mobile makerspace and technology education classroom. So what that means is we've taken a used school bus and we've retrofitted it to become a classroom on wheels. And we bring access to technology and education anywhere in our community. Uh, we've been at, on the project for about a year now. And just yesterday, the bus was finished being painted. So we're going to be taking the bus everywhere and anywhere in our community in the coming months, hoping to really build some engagement. Hi. Hi. So what's the Spicy History Challenge? So the Spicy History Challenge is, um, well, first I'll say why we're doing the Spicy History Challenge before I, I tell you about the Spicy History Challenge. I'm here talking about a project called the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series. And in 2015, we're organizing a Pan North America tour to create a documentary about why the humanities matter in the 21st century. And to build community and support in the year leading up to that, we're doing some pop-up events to try to make some fun content. So the first one of those events is the Spicy History Challenge. So what it is, is I'm asking historians to talk about their research, work, or passion for two minutes on camera. But before they do that, I want them to take as big of a bite as they dare of a jalapeno pepper. And at the end of the two minutes, I'm giving them a spoonful of delicious coconut oil that will help cut through some of the heat. And then all of those videos are going to go on our YouTube channel. Well, I don't know if that I can take it because I have okay. a booth that I need to get to, but I'm awesome. the director of a society that, um, if you come to the Seattle uh, area, we'd love to talk with awesome. you. Awesome. Yeah, we're going. Our, our end destination is Victoria, B.C., so that's oh, just across right. the water from yeah, Seattle. Yeah, you have to so. pass through Seattle. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thanks so much. Oh, well, good luck. It yeah. sounds wonderful. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Good work. We just had a, a brief visit by, by Lisa. She is the executive director at the University of Washington Interdisciplinary Arts and Science Program. And maybe we'll be taking our bus down to Seattle. Who knows? That would be fun. Seattle's a lovely city. 
Um, really good food city from what I hear. I would like to spend more time in Seattle than I have. Um, it looks like we're getting pretty good respect or re pretty good retweets on Twitter, which is always exciting. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so we're just hanging out on the live stream, talking about why the humanities matter in the 21st century, which um, is a question I've been thinking about a lot myself, given my involvement with this project, is why I think the humanities matter. And I think it comes down to the fact that there are many ways of knowing in this world, and all of them are have their pros and their cons. But our society is stronger when we embrace all forms of knowing. And if we move to a utilitarian view of education, the one that only values things that are productive in, in an economic sense, your engineering, your chemical engineering, your, your sciences, your trades, your excluding other forms of knowing. And the humanities matter to me because they allow people the, the freedom to contemplate the big questions to reflect upon art, to reflect upon history, literature, to think about the fundamental questions that make us human. And I think that, you know, our society wouldn't be, would be radically different without the sciences, but it would also be radically different without the arts and humanities. And in a lot of ways, the arts and humanities are, are the soul of our culture. And it would be a shame to exclude that way of knowing, because I think it, it does have a lot of value. So if you have thoughts about why you think the humanities matter, why don't you check out our Facebook page and, and talk about why you think the humanities matter, or even in the chat box in this window, uh, send us a little link. It would be great. I look forward to hearing from you all. Yeah, so it was a long day of traveling yesterday. So yesterday, my day looked like this. I started the morning in London, Ontario, which is in southwestern Ontario, Canada, and then I drove down with a friend to Detroit, where I went to the Detroit airport, then I boarded a flight to Dallas-Fort Worth, then hung out there for a little while, then boarded a flight to LAX, which I did not care for much as an airport. Um, spent some time in LAX, then I flew down to San Jose, which is a much better airport in my opinion, and then I rented a car in San Jose and drove down to Monterey, which took about an hour, or making it to my hotel around midnight. Um, after not having eaten all day, which was fun. Um, and, yeah. So that was a good time. I had to, to fly into San Jose because I need to be back in London for Monday, and none of the, the remaining flights from Monterey got me where I needed to be in time. So it'll be an adventure. I leave tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., so it'll be a... Yet another busy day and a very busy life. But, you know, everybody has a busy life, so I shouldn't complain. So if you're not busy living, you're busy dying, right? Right. Um, so here I am, in California, talking about why the humanities matter. Mm, half an hour until I do the Spicy History Challenge. I'm going to tweet that out. Enjoy the live stream of me tweeting. Getting some retweets. Oh, out of viewers. That means I'm going to take a moment and enjoy. Oh, we have another viewer. Welcome. 
Um, I'm here live streaming all day from the NCPH conference in Monterey, California, talking about why the humanities matter in the 21st century. So if you are attending the conference and would like to join me on this live stream, please come down and be my guest. I'd welcome the company. I'm going to tweet that out, in fact, inviting people. Tweeted it out. Working on getting some guests down here. It'll be a good time when they arrive. Hello, viewer. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a little chat comment and uh, we can create a conversation. Half an hour until the Spicy History Challenge happens. I'm pretty impressed by, by how engaged people are on Twitter at the NC, NCPH conference. I'm um, getting a lot of good feedback, a lot of good retweets. Um, it's good to see a, a conference that promotes online engagement because I think that's really important to re reaching a wider audience. Although, uh, a campaign that only relies on social media will never reach the, the widest audience possible given that not everyone uses social media. So it's nice to see people taking a very holistic approach these things, and uh, yeah, we're going to be having a good time here today. We're going to be having a great time here today. So when I get back to London, um, Ontario, I'm going to be teaching a two-day class on teaching with technology, and then Wednesday I'm going to be getting ready. Oh, you might have some guests. Hi. You want to take the Spicy History Challenge? Yes. That is wonderful. Um, so this... Back up and say, I'll tell you why I'm here. Yes, why I'm are you here, here with a project called the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series. Okay. We're uh, in 2015, planning the summer of 2015, planning a pan North America tour to create a web documentary about the role of the humanities in the 21st century. So I think we have 15 stops planned, and we're going to be talking to library schools, community groups yeah. about why the humanities matter. Yeah. And in the year leading up to that, we're kind of trying to create some fun content yeah. to get people excited about the humanities. Right. And the first one we're playing with is the Spicy History Challenge. Yeah. So. Historians are being asked to talk for two minutes about their research or their passions or their work. Um, but before they do that, they have to bite down on the jalapeno pepper and, <laughs> and, um, talk, about and talk about it. And that's going to be put up on our YouTube channel. And then at the end, um, you get a nice spoonful of coconut oil because that will help quench the heat. I see. So now I'm really like on the hot Yeah, so the hot you are not committed. Literally. Yeah, exactly. That's so you're a challenge. Okay, well, I have to think about what I would talk That's about. That's fair. Um, and I'll be doing my own, the first Spicy History Challenge of the day at 10.30. Okay. So, so could, you could like watch that and see if, see I, if I could manage. Yeah, because these are only jalapenos, because yeah. sometimes you get one that's, like, barely hotter than yeah, green exactly. pepper. So. I've already had some today. So exactly. I went down to the uh, Trader Joe's, and they only had jalapenos. I was looking for something maybe with a bit more oh. heat, but uh, <laughs> like bigger. Like Yeah, something, something a little bit more fun. Okay. But I guess we're not quite in season. Um, so that's those are our cards. So public engagement head of play. Yeah, that's uh, I'm I'm Ryan. Chief and of fun. Chief of fun, and that's um, a nonprofit that I'm a part of, and okay. it's called the Maker Bus. And what we've done yeah. is we bought a used school bus, oh, yeah. and we're turning yeah. it into a mobile technology classroom and maker cool. space. Cool. Um, yeah. Really? Similar, oh, cool. I think, that I just happened to see yeah. on our university website, which I didn't know. Yeah. Awesome. So okay, I gotta make some decisions about whether or not because I'm not really serious. It's okay. Anyone can take the spicy history. I am a humanitarian. Challenge. If you are a humanist, you are. <laughs> I you am are also more than sort of a humanist. Yeah, I really have to get always the question of what is. Yes, that is always the question. Um, oh, and also everyone that 
does the spicy history challenge yeah. gets a picture of themselves taken yeah. at take, the end of the process, and, like, to see and then you can you, exactly, you, uh, and you take that home as a memento of, of why you shouldn't take peppers from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll All right. think on this. All right. Excellent. Thanks so much. Take care. And if you know anyone that might be interested, pass okay. the word along. So we had another guest. Drop by two people from the University of Indianapolis. Yes. Very good. Good to see people coming by. 25 minutes until the Spicy History Challenge starts. Exciting times. Exciting times. I wonder if by the end of the day I will have any voice left at all. Hi there. I will not be taking the Spicy Challenge by the challenging other people on Oh, Twitter. excellent. I appreciate <laughs> that. Has Mark DeVoe been down? Not yet. He says he's going to do it. Awesome. So, well, I'm going to do the first okay. one at 10... I mean, maybe not the first one, but uh, I will do A1 at 10.30. Um, uh -huh. yeah. And we're also live streaming everything awesome. today, so we're, we're okay. up and yeah. we're out. So people want to... Okay. Yeah, we also have a podcast studio set up down there if people want to record a podcast. Okay. But it's here at kind of a digital playground. This is okay. the table. Where are you from? I'm from... Um, well, I live right now in... Um, you're on there. Sorry, I don't, I don't really have much information on my thing. I was a late registry. Um, I live in London, Ontario. I'm a uh -huh. public history student at the University of Western Ontario. Okay, okay. And you're inspired by drunk history and things like that? I yeah, think. kind of. There's kind of trying to get more people up doing, you know, a bit more non-traditional things with history and getting it up on the Internet because you never know who might end up watching you and what kind of engagement you might create. I'm also part of a project, a nonprofit organization called the Maker Bus, um, and that's also where our whole thing has been born out of. And what we've done is we've bought a used school bus, uh -huh. and we've renovated it to make a mobile technology education classroom um, so we can bring it to library schools and community groups and, and get people excited about learning and engagement. Um, this is fantastic. I'm looking at all your toys here. And, yeah. Uh, are you kind of self-taught on these things? Yep, definitely. Um, I, I'm a medieval book historian by training, um, so none of this stuff really this came... This is distinctly unmedieval. This is distinctly unmedieval. Um, although there is a torture aspect to the Spike Okay, there is that. You get that going. That. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah. I think these people are here to take the challenge. I think Mike looks like he wants yeah, to take yeah, the yeah. challenge. Yeah, no, I was... Jessica said this. Oh, there she is. Hi, Jessica. Are you doing this soon? We're doing it all, all day. All, all... Oh, no, she took her place the challenge. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing one at 10.30, 10 um, but if you would like to do one before 10.30, oh, um, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. I'm also live streaming everything on YouTube, oh, yeah, excellent. so here awesome. we are. Yeah. What's going on here? Let me know. What's happening? What's happening? Yeah. At this table? Yeah. Well, we're here promoting the Humanities Matter tour, so we're trying to get some kind of fun content up, mm -hmm. and um, the Spicy History Challenge was one idea we came up with to kind of get people engaged online with... Uh, What's that for? So the Spice History Challenge, um, I'm asking people to talk about their, their research or their work for two minutes on camera. Um, but before they start talking, I'm asking them to take as large of a bite of this jalapeno <laughs> as they dare, um, chew and swallow, and then talk for two minutes. Wow. Um, and then at the end, of, two, my gut. <laughs> and then the end of the two minutes, coast. you get a spoonful of delicious coconut oil to help clear oh. the, the heat out. <laughs> okay. Which is great. I, I was eating some of this earlier today, just mm. for fun. Is this it's delicious. You were at Trader Joe's earlier, is that what you yeah. picked it up? Yep. Oh, okay. That's where I ran into you this yeah. morning, sir. Yeah. It's it's like five dollars a thing cheaper here than in Canada. Oh, I'll pay. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, stock up on five dollars cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So the price of bananas? No, I didn't bananas are that expensive in Canada. Well, nineteen cents a pound is pretty good, right? That is um, pretty good. Well, Organic twenty nine cents. Go to Metro, it's ninety nine cents. Really? Bucks a pound. Oh wow. Crazy. No, no, I just I don't have many of my own cars, so I brought. If oh, you okay. Want to know no, about I, I was wondering. Bus. I was wondering yeah. who uh, who was here with you. Just me. Uh, just yeah. Okay. No, Beth has her mom visiting up in London this weekend, okay. so she's uh, engaged. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. I will hang around though. Did, sorry, did you say somebody has signed up? I have someone that's tentatively <laughs> interested in, in it. Um, like I said, I need to have my gut. With yeah. The rest I had of someone day. say, I want to do the Spicy History Challenge, and I told them what it was, and they seemed a little more reluctant. But at 10.30, I'm doing one, and oh. once I show everyone how oh, easy okay. it is, Perfect. Like then it'll good. lower the, the <laughs> bar of entry. Maybe we can convince Jessica we're taking a fly home. They don't want to be sitting on a plane. Uh, well, they don't, they don't leave today, do they? Yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's too bad, but... Uh, I think that, well, 
they were looking at flights, and I think they both have work. Uh, or something. Next week? Yeah, um, well, maybe not. They needed to get back. Yeah. Uh, People have 40 lives. Yeah. So, did you meet, did you meet Tim over there after? Did you no, I haven't seen him. Oh, okay. Or maybe water. if I have, I didn't catch the okay. name. Yeah, so if you know anyone that might be interested in doing the Spikes History Challenge, send them, yes. send them my way. Did you bring out the squibble? Yeah. So we have some podcast studio set up here if anyone wants to talk about why they think it's been better. So we can get that going. Um, I'm limited on ports, so I'll have to switch things oh, yes. okay. in and out to make that happen. But uh, yeah, we're all... Were you here earlier today? Uh, I think I, when you saw me... Okay. So Why did you get all this here? You went ahead of the bag. Oh, yeah, what? Well, yeah, sorry. I dropped it. Yeah, right before you saw me, I dropped off. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant set up. Say, what was in that Trader Joe's bag? I fit a lot of coconut oil. Space. Space. <laughs> behind the scenes, behind the curtain. So here's our live stream going. Right now we have zero viewers, but we've had up to two viewers today. It's very okay. exciting. Up to two. Up to two viewers. Does, uh, does Michelle know about this? I don't know. Okay. I mean, you should send her a quick hit. Of course, it is a Saturday, so uh, there'd be nobody in the office. Carol wouldn't be around. Mm -hmm. so. But I'm really excited because I've been trying to get live streaming stuff sorted out, so I finally got it up and working. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to be live streaming well, it's great all that the time. The connection time. Is, is, is working well. Like, I assume. Yeah. I haven't really watched the, the other end of it, but it okay. seems like it's working okay. okay. Um, and then. Podcast studio set up, the spicy history. Everyone that does the spicy history challenge gets a photo of themselves to take home as a souvenir. <laughs> nice. Um, did you bring did you bring the sack boy outfit? Did, did, did you nope. to wear that? No. Nope. <laughs> what was that? What was that all? <laughs> I meant the emails. Do you know Mike Chi in or Jessica filled me in yeah. after so. Um yeah, and I just typed in Mike and sent it out to the first person that because I was in a hurry. Sure. Yeah, and I went, Oh wait, I should check. What is that though? So yesterday or wait. Yeah, Dude, a Thursday night with fashion show, and one of the designers had, um, she does really elaborate costumes, okay. and Sackboy is a video game character that's like a boy made out of a burlap sack, essentially. Oh, yes. Um, and there was a life-size Sackboy costume, and we needed someone. We had a model back out at the last minute, and I, Mike Chi was the right height. To, okay, I need, we needed someone between 5'4 and 5'8. Okay. Um, so, so I could have done it. Yeah, are you between? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe just and we ended up finding someone at the event that was willing to wear it, so <laughs> it was it was good. It looked really cool. Um, there was a videography team at the fashion show, so they're going to produce something and put it together so people that couldn't make it can watch. So where was it? Museum London. Oh, it wasn't Museum. Yeah, okay. We took over their third Thursday event on oh, or for yes, March. Yes, okay. Good. Yeah, so we um, highest or best attended third Thursday of the year wow. and second best attended ever at Museum London. Really? Yeah. Okay. So they were pleased with that. Now, who was that? Uh, Where's your contact there? Uh, Katie, 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 Katie. Or no, that's uh, that's what I always want to say, but it's yeah. not. It's another Katie. Um, good. There's no one watching me. Forget Katie's name. Um, <laughs> she's the public engagement coordinator for Museum London. So she's more of a PR person than a, okay. than a museum worker. Um, well, that's great. Yeah. Nice. Katie and I were on, on TV on Wednesday talking yeah. about it. Okay. The the local one? Yeah, on Scott Rogers. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it was a busy, it was busy week. I was on the CBC yeah. on Monday. CBC Radio. No, I saw yeah. it completely. And then we had but, three well, so different... Was this the same thing? No, they were talking yeah. about the Maker Bus on CBC. Oh, the uh, I was on Ontario okay. Morning. Um, oh, were you? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we had three different newspapers doing stories about us okay. this week. It was like crazy, like, so onslaught. So with... Uh, on Ontario Morning. I was talking to Wei Chen. Oh, it was Wei Chen. Yeah. Okay. My contact there is a guy named Sandy something or other. Okay. Um, he's the producer. <laughs> yeah. No more media parents. I'm horrible. I forgot everybody's I, I am horrible with names. Like, I, there were so many people at the fashion show. People were like, Ryan, how's it going? And I just like, hi, you <laughs> person. You look vaguely familiar. What drop on yeah, so for the third Thursday, we pre-sold about 100 tickets, and then we had about another 100 people come, so we had about wow, 200. Good, good show. All right. Yeah, uh, so there's best pre-sales, but we didn't quite make the best overall numbers. Okay. Did, um, you know, was there a forum then for us to receive feedback? Um, we haven't done any of that okay. yet, because it just, like, I literally had to leave the next morning, so sure. we're going to do some 
we're going to talk with Katie and do a... Like a oh, I was saying, it was well attended, and you had the sense that people yeah. enjoyed themselves. Yeah, it was, it was, the fashion show part was excellent. Like I was really amazed by the quality of the materials that we, we got. We had um, 13 different designers doing 22 different outfits. Wow. Um, and it was everyone from local people to as far away as Philadelphia coming out to show. Wow. Show center, so. Good. Can't believe it. It all works. <laughs> yeah, now you're here. Yeah. So far away from it all. Yeah. So I'm really excited for March to be over because March. Has it's been, been a, a long month. Well, I mean, yeah. you guys have been really busy, right? just uh, with with school and then all your other extracurricular activities. So there you go, one viewer. One viewer. This is my. We're joined with a special guest today. This is Mike Dove. He is the. Public History Internship Coordinator at Western University. Do I have your title right? Yeah, something similar to that. Something similar to that. Um, and how are you enjoying captures at all? NCPH so far. Great, great time. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, uh, just attended a, a session on internships, mm -hmm. paid or unpaid. Yeah, I saw some people on it's Twitter that dilemma. weren't here talking about that, so it started a larger conversation. It did. Yeah. Uh, now it's a very different landscape between the United States and Canada. Uh, as far as private donations and uh, uh, cultivating donors and that kind of thing. Which country do you think is easier to get a paid internship in? Uh, I would say the United States. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, again, more private money's around. Yeah. Um, and I think the value that uh, we place on, um, on the field, on the, the type of work that historians do, I think it's largely well, it's more valued here and in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that uh, professional intellectual is uh, still alive and well in some some parts? Uh, yeah. Not as heavily under attack as back home. Yeah. Uh, that being said, mm -hmm. hi. Hey, hey. So scenes. what's the story with the this all bus? this whole thing? Well, um, I'm here talking about a project called the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series, and next summer we're aiming to take a tour across North America to create a documentary about why the humanities matter in the 21st century. And we're spending the year kind of creating content and building audience and talking to people. So I'm here today doing a number of different things. We can do a podcast studio set up for people that want to record podcasts about why they think the humanities matter. If people want to write on post-it notes why they think the humanities matter, I will take pictures of them and put them on our website. Um, I'm also live streaming this morning. So we're live on the internet here with a whopping zero viewers at the oh. moment. <laughs> and, um, so I think you're like, just throw everybody away. <laughs> yeah. And... What I'm most excited about is something I'm calling the Spicy History Challenge. So I'm asking historians or people with a passion for history to sit down and talk about their research or work for two minutes. And uh, But before they start, I'm asking them to take uh, as large of a bite as they dare of one of these jalapeno peppers and um, just kind of to see how how the, that influences their, their conversation. Then all those videos are going to go up on our YouTube channel. Ah, interesting. And then okay. at the end of the two minutes, you get a, a nice spoonful of coconut oil to help oh. quell the heat. <laughs> Oh. All right. Coconut oil is delicious. It's worth doing the challenge just for the. Oh, and I and I'm doing one at 10:30, so I'll be doing the first one of the day. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. So Very interesting. I can show people that it, it is possible, and and you will not be bodily harmed, hopefully. Excellent. Bye. Bye. Um. So, oh, by the way, I'm Kate. I'm Hi. a PhD student at Brown. Cool. I'm Ryan. I'm a MA student at uh, Western University in Ontario. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, well, I think for now I'll fill out a uh, post it. Thank you so much. Maybe I will return later if I dare be broadcast doing anything. Uh, all right, Let's see. What are you doing your PhD in? Oh, um, American Studies. Mm -hmm. I study 19th century history um, and material culture. And I'm doing, we also have an MA program in public communities, so cool. I'm doing that. And I really want to work in museums or historic yes. sites or something like that. So. Yeah, actually, I did a project in Canada mm -hmm. last year yeah. um, in Montreal. I was oh, nice. with the Concordia yeah. Center for Oral History and Indigenous Hey, here Montreal is a really fun city. It is very cold. I mean, of course, maybe by Canadian standards. No, Montreal is cold <laughs> by anyone. Yeah, I read that the only other city on Earth that with that population that's that cold is Moscow. Ooh, so it is the I that. the mm -hmm. second coldest, most populated city. I think that's what. Montreal yeah. Is. I mean, it's kind of bad because the academic year is like the coldest yeah. months, and it started to get. It was nice when we arrived, and it was nice when we left, but for the most part, it was dark and freezing. Yeah, yeah but from, I did like it. I'm from the West Coast originally, and in my undergrad, we had fall semester and spring semester, and then when I moved out to Ontario, they had fall semester and winter semester. And I thought, oh, that's strange. And then I now know why we don't have spring semester because 
it's almost April and there's still snow on the ground. Yeah, right. Um, Alright, so let me think about this for some reason. Why do the humanities? <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard question. Alright, so it's hashtagging? Hashtag. Yeah, because we've been using the humanities matter hashtag. But, so. Uh, Okay. <laughs> this might be kind of cheesy. Thank you so much. But I'll put it down there. Awesome. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you, Kate. Yeah, nice meeting you as well. And if well. you know anyone that might want a jalapeno or some coconut <laughs> oil, just send it my way. All right. Yes. Very nice meeting you. And so long. Take care. Hello? Yeah. Cool. Eight minutes. We had one viewer, and then Orion started speaking to me, and, and uh, we lost him. We're live streaming everything today. Yeah, I know. I was watching it for the last time. It was oh, probably me, nice. and my computer went offline when I closed it. Hi, Zebedee. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're being a backdrop. Yeah, I'd be in the picture too. I have a tripod. Yeah, I'd be in the picture too. Oh, I have a tripod. Oh, I have a tripod. I spilled water all over myself. I just realized I gave a pot, but I think they're going to be in the same size. Oh god, I got strapped. That's right. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. 
I was so tired last night. It was full <laughs> wheels. I got to the airport this morning and I said, uh, all right, you can either have an Escalade really? or a Toyota Prius. You said Escalade. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I went to the Prius. Oh, really? Well, let's, let's guess. It was great. I drove around. Not planning to drive around. I drove around. Uh, and uh, made it back here. And uh, so I think it was probably driving for some time. I think it's kind of rewarding for how much it's costing. It's quite sad. They're really quiet. You don't know when they're well, out. Well, yeah, I've never driven one before. Um, so, uh, okay, do you guys want to post and then I will set a timer and I'll Yeah, I've never done another hybrid before. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, yeah. the guy the I I just stand and I'll fix it. That's good, that's good. Okay, can you guys get closer together so there's room for me when I go in? Okay, that's fine, Sam. Yeah, okay. Yes. Go. Okay. Are you on this side? I'm going to go beside Ryan. Okay. Stop moving. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Nice. All right. Go. All right, I gotta run. I have a session to go to. No, we'll come back down here. Okay. Uh, the gear killed two bucks. Okay. So what are your plans after two? Want to aimlessly run one? Okay, you're okay. just going to check it out. Yeah, it looks like it. And it should be nice. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to go, enjoy the occur. Thanks. And we'll uh, see you on the next one. Yeah, actually, right? It's only a couple of seconds. Okay, guys. See you later. Before you leave, can you help me frame the camera on myself so I know? Yes. All right. It's probably pretty tight on my oh, yeah. Instagram. Watch it. So it's probably pretty tight on my face, so you can it's watch the tight on your face. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. Okay, awesome. Um, and and uh, and then you're gonna just speak into this, right? Yeah. And then I'll start a timer for myself, so I know how long it's been. He's gonna. He's taking. Out, he's yeah. undertaking the spicy history challenge. Oh hell! Uh, <laughs> you do want to do it? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. You do? All right. Yeah. So awesome. Go ahead. You want you want to go first? No, no, no. All right. No, I mean I'll, I'll come no. back. I've been done. Are you going to be yeah. doing this for a few minutes? Yeah, no, I'm here until two doing this today. So yeah. Okay, so are you doing it or are you? Uh, yeah, I am the one that's that's. I'm doing the first one to show people that. It oh, can be okay. Done. It's kind of a trial run. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean I'm going to do it regardless. So. Awesome. <laughs> I'm not and do you mind if we put our your video on our YouTube channel? Not at all. Awesome. That's great. So do you want to do it now? Sure. Okay. Yeah, all right. Go for it. All right. This is exciting. Maybe should I get some water, or is that not part of it? Um, you, uh, what I have is this coconut oil here. I live in Hawaii, so I love coconut oil. Yeah. And you all are with uh, Connecticut? Central um, no, I'm. Uh, we're with the University of Western Ontario, or oh, Western okay. University, oh, okay. depending on what you like to call it on a given day. Hey, whatever you want. They just changed its name, so there's a bit of confusion on. All right, so here. Coconut oil. So we're asking people to do introduce themselves, um, talk about what, where they come from, what they do, and then I'll give you the two-minute timer, take a bite of the pepper, and then talk about your historical research or interest in history for two minutes, and then you get some coconut oil. Okay. So after I eat, then I talk about what I'm interested in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this uh, 
Is this timed out or something? Uh, yeah, I'll turn it back. Oh, I see. Alright, so... All right, so you're live, so. My name is uh, Justin Matley. I'm with the Kona Historical Society. Uh, I'm a farm interpreter on a historic living history of Kona Coffee Farm. So uh, I am here at my second conference. First one was in Pensacola. This is my second, so I'm enjoying myself. So now I'm going to do the, the challenge of the peppers. Any pepper? Uh, any pepper you like, and your two minutes starts now. Do I eat the whole thing? As much as you, you care to. What kind of pepper is this? It's just a jalapeno. They didn't have anything spicier in okay. the store today. So I'm interested in all types of um, um, historical matters, no matter what they are. Uh, on our farm, actually, we have 30 uh, Hawaiian chili pepper plants, which we harvest. Uh, they're pretty spicy. Um, this is pretty spicy, too. But So uh, I'm interested in foodways, historic foodways, diaspora. Um, all types of history. Um, this plays into historic foodways in many ways uh, as it records uh, how tolerant I am for spice. And when do I eat the coconut? Uh, at the end. Just if you want to cool down. So I have an undergraduate degree uh, in Auburn, from Auburn University in psychology, a master's degree from the University of Alabama Huntsville in political science, uh, where I was introduced to public history. And I think it's a great field. Do I eat more than one? Oh, no, just one. Um, as you can see, the Hawaiian chili pepper has prepared me for this. Can't hear it. And, um, the Hawaiian chili pepper has, some people say, one little chili pepper has as much vitamin C as 10 oranges. I've heard that about chili peppers. So, um, growing up, uh, my father used to uh, pickle different, make different pepper jelly. So, once again, I may have skewed the study here. For it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need to leave me out, you can. No, no, this is great. Wow, are you eating this? No. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Good time to have this set up where there's no uh, competing. Yeah, we've got another one in the bag. So, um, yeah, so I really enjoy uh, this conference. I'm about to head out back to Hawaii, the Big Island, and I hope uh, that you all can come to visit us there. Awesome. And I have a uh, few seconds left before I I try some coconut oil. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And if you'd like some coconut oil to cool down, be our guest. This is great to cook greens with, by the way. Sautéing greens. I, coconut. I love shrimp and coconut oil. You shrimp too. and coconut oil, but it's really the primary oil we use in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, so. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Justin. Mm -hmm. Well done. Maybe we can get into the edge out uh, your way sometime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh the... American Archaeological Association had this on Hawaii last year. Was that on the Wahoo? I can't Probably. remember where it was. My my partner's advisor ended up yelling. He didn't get it. And then if you want, I'm taking pictures. Or I want to print them off to these. Done this by you think you want a memento? Yes. All right. So hold the sign, and I'll just get a shot of you. All right. So say spicy. Spicy. <laughs> Great. And I'll just print that off, and uh, thanks so much, Justin. Hey, no problem, man. Great. Yeah, I yeah. like this. Yeah. And you're it's a perfect really person really to do the first one of that. <laughs> what is the first one, huh? Yeah. How many peppers you got? I've got six, but I can make another run down at Trader Joe's if I have to. Oh, there you got them from? Are those yeah. organic? Uh, I think they are. Um, I was a little disappointed. I guess it's the wrong time of year, but they only had jalapeno. I was hoping to get something a bit what, more. Oh, really? Wow, you're a bit zestier. But, uh, <laughs> what about signing away? Was there some place to that? You know, a little bit. Uh, it's a little residual, but okay. like I said, uh, you know what I meant to say during that is, uh, so part of the interpretation we do is that when uh, Japanese children would get in trouble back in the day, uh, the parents would make them eat a chili pepper. Really? Yeah, instead of washing their mouth out. So, That's funny. So uh, my, my whole spiel is, so if you like hot food, act like you don't. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, because of vitamin C content, it's got to be better for it. So. Yeah, exactly. Unless there's some super soap. What made you come up with this um, this, this model? Um, so we're doing a, a project called the Humanities Matter Bus from a web series where we're trying to uh, next summer do a tour across North America, talking to people about why they think the Humanities Matter in the 21st century. Right. Um, so we're going to spend the year doing kind of non-traditional 
ways of engaging with people about about the topic. So oh, cool. this is just one of the things that came into oh, our head. Um, yeah, um, I used to live in in Korea for a while, uh -huh. and they just love eating oh, yeah. peppers as a side so, dish. And like just, some of them would be fine, and some would just knock your socks right off. It's hard to gauge. So yeah, good, depending on. Yeah. Um, I've been there almost a year. Yeah. So I moved from Alabama to Hawaii. Yeah, but that's where I'm from. So um, I was born in Missouri, moved to Alabama. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big difference. You know, it is. Uh, it, you know, if people say cost of living, but the psychic cost of living is not much. Cultural. My uh, partner, she's East Indian, so spices are, yeah, you, right. you know, I mean, I can deal with some heat, you know, and, uh, usually we get Thai, spicy hot, Thai hot, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's a great change, uh, and plus it makes, it opens up this whole part of the country, yes, yeah. and so you're with Ontario as well? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and I'll reach down from the East Coast. Okay, all right, uh, yeah. Right out there, the North Atlantic. Um, you know, I have this one in Canada and all, but I want that's going to open up that area. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. West Coast. Uh, Ryan's from Victoria, is it? Yeah, Victoria, BC. So, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, we overlooked Calicut to a bit on uh, where Captain Cook landed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, as he was getting killed, on back on the boat, um, Vancouver went back to England, came back, stopped in Monterey. Uh, picked up cattle from him, took it back to that county in Quebec, and basically you had ranching under the county because Vancouver brought it. Over. I know you guys. Vancouver's huge uh, to a lot of the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great man. Um, well, I studied Hudson's Bay Company as well. Oh, the okay. HBC at the yeah. Park 71. Absolutely. Yeah. Printer so headache. Nice yeah, it's really handy for doing photos. <laughs> but um, sometimes printers just don't want to cooperate. Yeah, I guess the Hudson Bay company would Yes. Yeah, eventually the second or decade case. So, so the the coffee culture there started because. Um, you know how the Civil War forced immigration in Hawaii? They cut off uh, the sugar supply of California. Oh, yes. So, that opened up. That forced immigration. There we go. Uh, yeah. Which forced immigration was. Yeah. 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 So, when that happened, uh, they'd already started growing coffee. I think we were talking about during the early 1800s. Nobody was noticing it. Wines were really about traditional. Methods. So, two companies, Captain Cook Coffee Company and the American Factory, released the coffee belt lab. It's about 25 miles long. But, uh, they uh, released it, subdivided it into five and a half, seven and a half pods, and then began to solicit the Japanese workers for like two, three years of their contract to come there and reach the start the hires. This is like very progressive. Sure. Sure. <laughs> totally not the culture in that thing. Yeah. Hey, all right. Thank you. Go. Go. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is going to be on. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Okay. Um, actually, why don't you just give me your email address so yeah. I can send it to you when it's up and sure, sure, I'll do that. Up and edited. It'll probably be a few days before I have the time to. No, no, yeah, exactly. Had, had, how many conferences have you all been to? This is our first one with Humanities Matter. Uh -huh. Oh, actually, we we actually started the project at uh, the. Digital Humanities 2013 conference uh -huh. at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, uh -huh. but since it's become a more formalized. This seems like a pretty progressive. Project. I've been hearing their name a little bit. Lincoln, the History Harvest. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. my uh, I run a nonprofit that all is about public education, uh -huh. and we're trying to launch a History Harvest in September. Really? In London? Yeah. In, in London, Ontario? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we harvested uh, in a different way 700 uh, pumpkins mm -hmm. this year just on our. Six area plot, you know, so harvest. But you know, uh, after you finish uh, on the 
the mainland of uh, North America. Please come out to. Uh, wait, did I just give you that? Did I just uh, keep that? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> nice. The pepper's got to go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so you come out to the <laughs> wife sometime. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Any excuse. Take care. <laughs> Good show. There you go. You didn't have to do it after all, right? I'm still, I'm <laughs> still going to do one. Um, let's get the camera focused. That was all a ploy to draw people here. Exactly. <laughs> just keep delaying. I don't mind uh, hot food, so hopefully. Yeah. Wow. I just Where's... can't do it anymore. It just catches up to you. Yeah, I think that's definitely part of the. Could you just double check the, yeah, the camera sure. set up again? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your, your help, yeah, Mike. And yeah. I'll, uh, I'll leave you be. Okay. I'm happy someone did it. That's aw That was really interesting, too. Right. Just, just demolish that pepper. Whatever. Yeah. 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 That's what I was wondering. I thought he was just going to dig right out through Yeah, I thought he was going to eat all the peppers. <laughs> We've had our first... Person accept the challenge today. Uh, so there's a yeah. I you came over to me at the registration desk, and there, there's a spicy history challenge. I mean, I'm I'm up for it. I eat I eat spicy food all the time. Oh, yeah. so. Well, it'll be it'll be hard to do that guy. He uh, <laughs> works for a Kona Coffee he's, history he's, plant. He's in Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they grow peppers there. He's just he's just like he started eating the stem. Like he was not based on. Uh, I, I mean, so what, what, what exactly is the chance I'm, yeah, I'm so up for? It. Awesome. So what we're asking people to do is just uh, introduce themselves on camera, mm -hmm. and then spend two minutes talking about either their historical research or mm -hmm. the projects they're working on mm -hmm. uh, for about two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of two minutes, you get a spoonful of coconut oil to help cool everything down. And, okay. And then we'll, we're putting everything up on our YouTube channel. Okay. okay. And you get to have your picture taken. And you get to have a, your picture taken at the end of it as... Uh, a keepsake to remember. Okay. The, the challenge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I think I'm up for it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Do you want to think? You don't want to think too long on it. Yeah, I, I, I can just do it. I probably, probably yeah. don't want to think too long on it. Do you want to do it now or come back in a little bit? Um, we could do it now. That's fine. Oh, oh wow! When it rains and pours with people, this is great. Too, so it's probably better to do it. There you go. There you go. All right. So I'll get you a clean spoon. <laughs> I only have six peppers, so once they're gone, okay. that's it for the challenge today. So no, I'm gonna do you are going to be one of the brave few. To do it all for the pepper, yeah. All right, so have a seat right here, and uh, okay. got the camera all set up. I'll give you a, a timer on my phone. Okay, so where are you from? Living in Indianapolis right now. Oh, cool. So, Nick, uh, introduce yourself briefly, and then we'll give you the challenge. Okay, wonderful. My name is uh, Nick Sacco, and I am second-year graduate student at IUPUI in Indianapolis, and um, I'm also working for the National Council on Public History. I'm the program assistant, so I've been helping out with the 2014 meeting here in Monterey, uh, California. Awesome. So I'm going to hit two minutes on the timer, so feel free to eat as much of the pepper as you dare, and then uh, talk about your research. Okay, so just any any pepper, huh? Any, any pick your poison. Okay, fantastic. Here we go. I said a second of, oh, we weren't recording, but we are. That would have been bad. Good so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jalapenos can be hit and miss with spice. Mm -hmm. Everything's going back right down to the stem. I'm very impressed today. Now I'm going to have to do it like that. You just throw it in that bag. Okay. Okay. So just chat a little bit about projects? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, well, lately here I've been studying a lot about historical memory and kind of the, um, not only how people remember, but kind of the nature of why people remember in the first place. And so my 
specific research as of lately has been looking at the Indiana Civil War veterans and how they remembered the Civil War. And so kind of looking at how not only were they remembering the Civil War, but how contemporary issues, pardon me, how they shaped their memories of the war. So for example, in 1894 with the Pullman car strike, the veterans start saying stuff like, well, we fought the Civil War to preserve law and order, and we fought so that unions didn't have all the, they were very anti-union. So it's very fascinating because probably in their 20s at the time, there was not a lot of unions in the United States. It's probably safe to say that they weren't fighting to prevent unions from <laughs> making their way into the United States. So it's a contemporary event that is shaping how they understood the Civil War. So I'm very fascinated with kind of that intersection of um, memory and history and how people remember, what they remember is a little different than probably what ac actually happened and, and how contemporary events shape the past. And so that's really what I've been focused a lot on lately with my research. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for doing the Spicy History Challenge. And uh, now we'll just get your picture and, and send okay. it away. Okay. Thanks, well done. All right. Survived. So then you get your picture taken with the Spicy History sign. Okay. Yeah, I, I started like my throat got tied up for a second there, but it was good. Yeah, you did really well. That was great. Next time, spicier pepper. Oh, sorry, I put it on a weird setting. It's spicy. Spicy. Awesome. And, and, it, and it is. It's, it's catching up now. <laughs> oh, you didn't get your coconut oil. Yeah. I'm, oh, that's right. I probably I need a spoonful. Oh, you're starting to catch up with me a little bit. <laughs> I'll just print that picture up for you. Fantastic. <laughs> Never had coconut oil stuff. before, but this might I be. Think this is probably the best thing to have. Well, I needed to find something that would be safe at room temperature and still kind of help with people's heat. Just spread it around. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Nick. All right. And, oh, I'll just get your picture before I send you on your okay, way. Okay. Okay. So no trouble getting through, eh, with all your equipment? Uh, the TSA searched my bag. I got a little thing in it when I uh, landed. Okay. said, your bag has been searched by the... Oh, I see. The fine, since I'm live on the Internet, the fine people at the TSA <laughs> who are busy protecting our liberty mm -hmm. and in no way infringing upon it. Thanks. It's kind of, it's catching up now a little bit. <laughs> you can have some more uh, coconut oil if that helps at all. I'm fine. I uh, I do acknowledge that it's hot. It was <laughs> just took a second to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's good I didn't find anything spicier at Trader Joe's then. I didn't yeah, wanna... that, that's that's pretty good. I I have a pretty high tolerance for mm -hmm. for spicy food, and now I need to blow my nose too. So. <laughs> just don't have a right. Exactly. It's an neat printer, so it lays it down one layer at a time. Mm. It's amazing just what three colors can produce. Yeah, there you go. Well done. It's a Polaroid anyway. Right. Exactly. It's just all plugged into USB. It's amazing. Well, it's supposed to be Wi-Fi, but when Apple updated uh, the latest operating system. It broke all the drivers mm. for this thing. Mm. There you go. Thanks Perfect. so much, Nick. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Good job. All right. I'll see you guys around. Take care. Okay. Awesome. Good stuff. Look at that. People doing it. <laughs> I was worried that no one would. Well, it's, you know what? Those things are pretty, pretty quiet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even the uh, presenters over there. How was the pop-up museum yesterday? It looked interesting. Uh, I wasn't here for that. Yeah, I had my tour at Tannery Road yesterday. Okay. Um, which was great. Really well done. Uh, got Tim Thomas, who's uh, a history teacher, maritime historian as well. Mm -hmm. um, so he's been talking about maritime history for like, 35 years. Cool. He conducted that tour as well as a Harbor tour, which I did the day before that. So it was, I had to get out and see some stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, he's. You have a few sessions, particularly in the morning where it was overcast and cool. Yes. Um, but I mean, by lunchtime, it 
makes sense for you to really want to pick up. Got it. Well, because I know what's awaiting us when we get home, right? We're just going to step out and pass the storm coming through. Oh, really? In London? Just in Wednesday, so. Never it's ends. Cold again, so, uh, it never I've ends. Got, I've got to get some color in my face. And, uh, and just can't breathe. I, you know, the air is fine in London. Being by the coast, it's so much pressure. I find. Everything feels more uh, vibrant. Yeah. But yeah, no, the poster session was here for that the other night. It was uh, really well done. Mm -hmm. And. Um, um, that's probably yeah, that's probably the busiest this event has been. Mm -hmm. uh, the opening receptions I think was on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was pretty cool as well. Yeah, it's been great weather the entire time. Uh, we, we, we were thinking it's going to rain. It is the rainy season technically. But mm -hmm. They haven't had any rain. Yeah, but, uh, no, it's gorgeous. I mean, so many flowers in bloom, and you just don't want to be around June, July when the wildfires yeah. <laughs> start up. <laughs> no on the ground. Our, it's. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not, probably not far enough north to avoid the wildfires here. No, I mean, they will get them yeah. in like, you know, you know. But, you know, they also get fresh fires out here, too, because it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. There's a real danger. Of getting, like, getting out of control, mm -hmm. so. Especially on the coast. Yeah, definitely. So further down, I'm going to take a run down towards Carmel and uh, Big Sur. So there's some stands of redwood trees down there. Yeah, oh, that sounds I amazing. I have seen the redwoods, so. Yeah. No, it definitely makes you, me... Well, would you have seen some? How Ah, uh, yeah, we have some up up in yeah, Vancouver Island. Right. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Not not like the big groves of it like yeah. they have here, but right. you use more like a sequoia here and there. Okay. Yeah, there's one in Victoria that takes like, eight people to put yes. links to get their arms around. So yeah. So anyway, I thought I'd do that. So. And uh, see what I stumble upon. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that chose to go to grad school in California. Now I'm, I understand why they <laughs> chose to it, yeah. come here for grad school. Yeah. Well, when you're out walking around today, are you a fucker Steinbeck? I know, but yeah. a friend of mine who's doing his PhD up, at, uh, up in San Francisco was saying that it's very Steinbecky down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he lived here for a while. He was born in San Francisco. Um, so some of the characters, this book mm -hmm. song, can grow up to the first day of the sea. Uh, you know, are based on So there are some areas that are still, I guess, sites in It's still changing. It's neat, it's cool. Um, obviously, the handle rose is going to be changed. So you've been here since Tuesday? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, huh? Yeah, That's I left pretty, Tuesday. Pretty long trip. It is, yeah. I left Tuesday evening. Um, uh, drove to Detroit because we had that storm come in. Or they talked about mm -hmm. heavy rain and perhaps snow. And I knew I'd have to get going early in the morning to make it. Um, so I left Tuesday night. So I got to Detroit. Early morning flight. Anyway, so was fine. And I got here maybe a couple hours of spirit before the, uh, the open reception. So I think yeah, Jessica is stepping in on Tuesday night okay. because Jessica is volunteering for the first thing on Sunday. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, it's been good. It's been very good. Met a lot of people. Quite a few people from uh, the conference last year. Yeah. In that was in Ottawa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's been nice. Um, just kept kind of dealing with people who I'm going to see again probably in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to see if they science and tech right now. Mm -hmm. so, have you met Jake and Ryan? Jack no, I don't think so. The name kind of rings a bell. But yeah. He works with uh, Nan. He's one of the uh, organizers. Okay. But good guy, really good guy. Very interesting. Enthusiastic. Uh, so I introduced him to the girls. And he was hoping to be a physician working on a funder. It's just a funder issue. Uh, just getting on now because most people are uh, playing stories. Yeah, I have an idea. It's not a good thing to do. It's a good thing to take it. So, I'll have to start directing people that are aware. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to see. I'm uh, already late for the other session. All right. Well, I'm going to do, do a spicy history session. Okay. Good luck. Good seeing you, Ryan. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um,
have a good time set. Yeah, enjoy the trip, around. trip down to the Redwoods and yeah, enjoy that. Yeah. Um, are you doing anything for dinner? Uh, no, I don't have any dinner plans. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to get something together? We should. Yeah. Sure, yeah, definitely. Okay, do yeah, I don't think I'm going to be out late tonight. I just have to leave it at an okay. unholy hour. But yeah, definitely. Right. And I may uh, have an early uh, something over in the uh, Mission Ranch. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Well, yeah. Well, send me the. From here, oh, I'm just kind of exploring. And well, uh, have you heard of the Mission Ranch? No, I haven't. That was uh, it was one of the older missions, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, back in the 70s, 80s, they were uh, the condos in. Okay. Clint Eastwood was mayor at the time, Carmel. Oh, really? Uh, and he bought it. And he was six in the place um, to to keep it out of the condo developers' hands and turn it into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to be really it's supposed to be cheap, but you know, mm -hmm. everything around it, and, uh, a lot of local food and you know, local wines. And, um, they don't take reservations now, so I called last night, she said, well, cocktails begin at 4, and we're going to start at 5, we'd be busy, and this could be busy, so it's she's, she's pretty busy, um, so just arrive early and see what happens, but I know sure. this takes a lot of time away, but I thought even if I popped in. Mm -hmm. And how far is that from here? I think it's only Carmel's. Yeah, I'd go check that out with you on some company. But, yeah. um, so it's the Mission Ranch. Okay. You, you, I mean, sure. I don't, I don't you want to be there around five then? Uh, if you can, but again, if you're out walking oh. around after this, you only got a, two or three hours before you have to climb the car and drive again. Nah, but that's no, no problem. Also, I mean, I can come back if we eat at five, we'll be done by yeah. seven at least. Yeah. So yeah, I can come back and explore more. Or we can, more. you know, we can do it a little bit later. No, no, five, five I'm works. Busy. Sure. Let's yeah. do that. Awesome. Meet you there. And if it's crazy busy, then there's other places around. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and then early dinner sounds good. I haven't slept more than four hours in the past like <laughs> week, so I'm, yeah, I'm I'll drop the excited to go to bed early tonight. Oh, good stuff. All right, listen. Have a good cool. afternoon. Well, I'll see you later then. Take care. All right, so I'm about to do my own spicy history challenge right now. Hello, my name is Ryan Hunt. I'm a graduate student at the University of Western Ontario, and I'm also a co-founder of the Maker Bus. Learn more about the Maker Bus at www.makerbus.ca. And I'm about to do the Spicy History Challenge. So let's go. Monte. Oh. <laughs> That's way spicier than I thought it would be.
Oh, wow. It was really spicy. So, um, my research, I did my first master's degree, it was at the University of York, and I was looking at medieval book history. Um, so, that field of study was called Codecology, the study of the medieval codex, um, the study of medieval hands, it's called paleography, and um, I was very interested in, in manuscripts, manuscripts being handwritten medieval books. Coming from the Latin two words, root words, manus, meaning hand, and scriptus, meaning writing, so literally writing by hand. Um, so medieval manuscripts were generally written on what was called either parchment or vellum, usually made from the same animal, generally cow, sometimes sheep, occasionally squirrel. And um, these works were written by literally middle ages, generally by monks, by the later middle ages, mostly by lay people, only professional book writers. And um, Oh God! Um, the study of these books and particularly how they're used um, tells us a lot about medieval society. By the, the later Middle Ages, when the university system is booming, we see the Pakia system being developed. A system where people could rent part of a book, copy it out themselves, and then have a, an edition to take home with them. Um, medieval manuscripts were raised from anywhere from like tiny little books of hours to gigantic um, giant Bibles that were like a meter. Meter tall. Um, fun fact about the medieval book, I mean, books in general, is that things that we recognize as the right dimension for books are a ratio of 1.07. This ratio hasn't really changed at all in the history of the book. So my name is Ryan Hunt. That was my spicy history challenge. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Ooh, caliente. Mm. That was really spicy. I, I fully recommend doing this. It's a lot of, a lot of fun. Oh, goodness. Well, now I'm going to, now that my video has been recorded, I'm going to edit it and put it up online. Spicy history challenge. Oh, that was spicy. Wow. The coconut oil really helps, though. So if people are interested in doing the spicy history challenge, because I just had so much fun with it, come on down to the exhibit hall in um, the conference center at NCPA 2014.
We have three jalapenos left, and we're looking for um, historians to take the, <laughs> the spicy history challenge. I'm going to edit my video right now and, and put it up online so people can have a look. live streaming video of someone editing a movie. It sounds fascinating. Spicy history. This is the world's most thrilling live stream on the internet. Watching someone edit a movie. Try to maintain yourselves, please. And if people want to come down and do their own spicy history, you're more than welcome to join me. As someone who's just done it, it's a little unpleasant at the time. I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought I might throw up at a certain point, but I didn't. And what doesn't kill us only makes us stronger. So hello, my name is Ryan Hunt. I'm a graduate student. Video is almost ready. And I'm about to do the spicy history challenge. So let's go. The spicy history challenge. So hello, my name is Ryan Hunt. I'm a graduate student at the University of Western Ontario. And I'm also a co-founder of the MakerBus. Learn more about the MakerBus at www.makerbus.ca. And I'm about to do the Spicy History Challenge. So let's go. Shalante. Wait, I really thought it would be. Nose running now. It's pretty entertaining.
This is going to be pretty entertaining. Pretty good. That was a decent video, I have to say. All right, just gonna export it now as a file. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, if you would like to suffer like I just did, I mean, I mean, have fun like I just did, uh, please join me in a spicy history challenge down in the exhibit hall in the NCPH conference. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I promise you excitement. We've had three people do the Spicy History Challenge this morning. Um, two of them shrugged it off like it was nothing. I had a bit more of a struggle. I like to think it's because my I had a spicier jalapeno than they did. Um, clearly, clearly, I, it's not my inability to handle heat. Um, but fascinating histories. We've had one person talking about Civil War history. We've had one person talking about uh, the history of Hawaiian plantations. His work at a, at a coffee museum. Um, so we've had some really interesting things occur today at, with the Spicy History Challenge. So as soon as this video is uploaded, I'm going to throw it up on YouTube. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Today's going to be a good day. So we're always looking for more people to take the Spicy History Challenge. So come on down to the exhibit hall in the Monterey Conference Center and get your spicy history on. Hello, two viewers. So, there aren't any windows in the exit hall, so I, I wonder how the weather is outside. I imagine it's fairly nice. I could actually look it up. Maybe that's what I'll do, is look up the weather. Okay, Google. Weather in Monterey, California. It's 12 degrees and partly cloudy in Monterey. Oh, that's not bad. We're looking at highs of 17. That's nice. I was worried that it would be really hot while I was here, and since I'm used to the frozen wasteland that is Ontario, I uh, just wouldn't be able to handle it. But uh, 17. I can, I can handle 17. It's been one heck of a winter in, in Ontario and a lot of the northeast of the United States. Six months, six months now we've had snow. How How is that fair to anyone? It's not. There are no flowers. There's no grass. 
is it is cold, it's snowy, it's just generally unpleasant. And the video is ready. I just have to upload it to YouTube now. And it's amazing how quickly you recover from the heat. My name is Ryan Hunt. I'm a graduate. All right, so let's throw this up on YouTube. Get our spicy history on. So this may just wreak utter havoc with our stream. So if that's the case, I apologize. Um, but I will be here. So please come on down and say hi. We could use the company. Thanks to Mike Dove from Western Ontario, the University of Western Ontario, for coming down and being a guest on the show earlier. It was a lot of fun having someone to talk to. And thanks to um, our other guest. Oh, <clears throat> a bit of pepper just hit the back of my throat. Spicy history would be nothing without the participation of of our our friends. All right. We have remarkably good internet at this conference hotel. I, of all the conferences I've been to, I think this has easily the best internet connection of any of them. Um, ironically, last summer when I was at the, the Digital Humanities 2013 conference in the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the, the conference Wi-Fi was just atrocious, and I think people spent as much time being unable to access this as they were being able to access. And it wasn't the hotel itself was lovely. Like I'd never seen hotel staff work so hard to, to make sure the guests were comfortable. But just the conference internet was so brutal. We actually had our had our own portable Wi-Fi hotspot, and we had to use that most of the time because it's, you weren't getting anywhere with that internet. Put the memory card back in the camera. All right. Well, we're right over. As it would turn out, running a live stream while trying to process video really slows down your computer. Who would have thought?
So the YouTube video is currently processing and it should be ready in a few minutes. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So it's a little quiet here at the conference center, but uh, I'm hoping that things will pick up in the near future. This live stream has been pretty successful so far. It's been, been pretty stable. Um, we've had two very loyal viewers. Thank you, loyal viewers, whoever you may be. Um, and yeah, I think in the future, expect to see more live streams from our team because I think there's something really interesting about this format and this mode of communication. So. You know, and on Monday I'm teaching a class on using technology in education, so I may incorporate some live streaming into that. Hmm, food for thought. enjoy making faces at video cameras. It's fun. It's fun for me. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing that we live in a world where it's so easy to just live, some, live stream something where anyone in the world can see it. Technology. It's amazing sometimes. Sometimes it's less than amazing, but right now I'm feeling pretty, pretty marveled by it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Waiting for that video to finish processing. few minutes. We may have to wait a few minutes. But that's okay. These things happen. This live stream is going to be really fascinating. I'm glad it's being archived on the internet forever because this is something that the, the world must see. Um, it's very important. There's not any dead air or me just rambling at the camera. It's all, everything here is it's happening for a reason, a very important reason. We should never forget how important this live stream is, really. Now we're going to watch me transfer files onto my portable hard, hard drive. Again, the excitement never stops on this live stream. Never stops ever. files have been transferred. It was touch and go there for a moment, but we made it through with the support of you, single loan, single loyal viewer. Everything I do, I do it for you. Ooh. I found video effects. That's pretty cool. I like this. Bright and like high contrast. Spotlight. That's neat. It follows my face. Ooh, that makes me look really wrinkly. Makes me 
look kind of like someone's weird Vaseline on the camera. I, I black and white. It's already. Just keep black and white for a little bit. Keep this like it's deep. This live stream, it's serious. It's, it has gravity. See now that I made it black and white, people are are watching again. You know what? I'm gonna tweet out my new black and white live stream. serious. Let's see what other interesting things I can do. Oh, there's where I was looking all morning on how to hook up an external webcam and I finally found it. Oh, I'm using my default microphone. Now I've turned on my snowflake blue. This is better. Hopefully the sound quality has gone up. Save that for now. Video, bandwidth usage, chat, screen share, capture, Cameraman, what's cameraman do? <laughs> Not quite sure what this does. Broadcast settings. Mm, skip that. Google effects. Now these are going to be entertaining. Ooh, what's this? Headwear. Don't know. Oh, look at that. I'm wearing a mortarboard. Now I look like the cat in the hat. My head's too low. I have to go like this. Does that help? No crown. Did I get tiara? Pirate. Yes. This is really what this live stream needs, is me in a pirate hat. Yar, matey. I've got a hook for a hand. Yar. Shiver me timbers. This is pretty neat. Now I can track my head with the pirate hat. Wow. That's pretty neat. Clown head. A Google bandana. Or a, a headband. Birthday hat. Halo. I do like the Halo too. That's pretty good. I like how it moves. That's the best one. Devil ears. Yeah. I'm way into metal. Uh, it kind of breaks if I turn my head. I don't. Nope. That one doesn't really work for me. A little culturally appropriating, but that's okay. And dog face and cat face. That is disturbing. That is really disturbing. I'm sorry that I'm suggesting this to you, dear viewers. This is this is nightmare fuel. This is also disturbing. I think I'm gonna go back to the halo. Oh, a dog all dogs go to heaven. Randomize, remove all effects. Oh, there's more. But oh, wait, there's more. Glasses. Glasses on my glasses. A monocle. Let's take my glasses off to enjoy the monocle. An eye patch. Oh, if you had an eye patch and a monocle, that would be. Yeah, okay. Like, this, this one's pretty good. Not gonna lie. Alright, I'm just gonna rock this eye patch for a while. So the humanities matter because people matter. This live stream is clearly going too long. <clears throat> but 
on a more serious note, I'm here at NCPH today to talk about the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series. Uh, it's a goal of our project to next summer, summer 2015, to drive across North America creating a, a web documentary about the role of humanities in the 21st century. Um, it's a partnership between some grad students at the University of Western Ontario, the Technology Librarian at CUNY, uh, the Four Humanities Collective, DHSI, um, the University of Madison, Wisconsin for supporting this project. Um, and we're really hoping to get a lot of support and a lot of grassroots um, discussion about this project because we believe that the humanities are, at their core, a very human-focused subject, and we want to get as many people talking about the subject as possible before next summer. So I'm here today at NCPH 2013, or 2014 uh, issuing the Spicy History Challenge. And what the Spicy History Challenge is, is I'm asking people to talk about their research for two minutes on camera, but before they start talking, I'm asking them to eat this chili pepper. Um, and I'm recording this, and it's all going up on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've recorded three Spicy History interviews so far today, and a... Uh, Another one will be going up pretty soon. Uh, actually, I'm, my own my own spicy history uh, is going up in uh, any minute now once it's recorded. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Uh, like I look horrible. Who would wear dark glasses and have a goatee? Like this is just not even remotely a good look for me. I'm recording this, by the way. I'm taking a screenshot. All right. Prop. Can I move the cake? Can I eat? This is weird. This is really cool. I'm. I am unironically really interested by this. There's sounds I can use. You could do like a proper like morning DJ radio show with this. Backgrounds. Ooh, these are experimental backgrounds. Yeah. Make myself go back to normal. And um Whoa. I just get it right in the sweet spot. I'm on a beach. Now I'm on a brick wall. Now I'm in Venice. Greece, I suppose. Alaska, BC. Somewhere. I'm in a pixel scape. And now there's something weird going on. I'm not quite sure what this is doing. Interesting. And now we're back to headwear again. Back my halo. So clearly people must like my experiments with Google Effects because we have our highest viewership numbers of the day so far. So thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. I can add apps. What kind of apps can I add? Art project. Interesting. All of this is very interesting. I'm adding some doodles. The ability to doodle. Not sure what I just enabled. I enabled something. Effects. Let's check it out. Let's see if anything. Nope. I think I've, I think I've maxed out my effects for now. But it was really fun getting to experiment with that with you, dear viewers. So please, if you are interested in promoting advocacy for the humanities, come on down to the exhibit hall at NCPH and uh, I'd be happy to talk to you. I have a really fun table set up here. You can record a podcast. You can, you can record videos. Um, you can have your picture taken and printed out. We're live streaming. Kind of a digital play playground. I even have a Makey Makey. And if you guys know have, don't know what a Makey Makey is, it's really fun. It basically allows you to turn any physical object into a button for your computer. So we could have a lot of fun with that. So come on down. Come say hi. Do a spicy history. 
We're going to have a lot of fun. Or maybe you're busy. Tell your friends. Get everyone to come on down. Because we're trying to make something fun here. Alright, so let's see if my YouTube video is finished downloading, or uploading. Oh yes, Spicy History video is live, so I'm going to tweet this out to you guys.
Okay, so the video has been shared on various parts of the internet. Hopefully people enjoy it. Uh, we have two more videos shot already. We'll probably be releasing those sometime in the next couple days, um, when time permits. Hello, new viewer. As you may or may not know, we're um, down in the exhibit hall at the NCPH conference talking about why the humanities matter in the 21st century. Uh, we're doing some kind of non-traditional projects down here, recording podcasts, making videos, issuing the Spicy History Challenge. So come on down and say hi. Sorry to ignore you. I got caught up in, in Twitter. Uh, I look good to see lots of people engaging in interesting conversations about the NCPH conference there. Um, yeah, so... Spicy history. So, I was really amazed by the first spicy history video of the day. In fact, it was so good, I think I have to edit it right now. Get it up. Show people. Because it was pretty special. Pretty special. All right, let's get editing. Bone to get editing. He's a bone not to get editing.
All right, let's get editing those videos now. Lone viewer. Sorry, I was not the most engaging for a second there. I had to zone out to do some work. There must be sessions going on because it's a little quiet here in the exhibition hall. Now that I know it's so easy to live stream things on YouTube, I'm going to be live streaming everything on YouTube. <laughs> live stream the world. Live streams world. Right. Right. Live streams world. Right. Transition. All right. Got this video. My name is uh, Justin Matley. I'm with the Kona Historical Society. 
farm interpreter on a historic living history of the Kodaka. This is great to cook greens with, by the way. Saute greens and coconut shrimp and shrimp and coconut oil, but it's really the primary oil we use in Hawaii. No, basically this thing I was working on. I don't like the new iMovie very much. How do people in their internet land feel? They feel like iMovie. I'm not a fan. The old iMovie, you knew how it worked. This one, constant struggle to do anything. Alright, so we've got another video that's just encoding now and hopefully it'll be up pretty soon. <sighs> I have a lot of friends that live in California for grad school, and I, I really understand why they moved here. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Mm. Mm. Ontario is cold and flat and has no ocean.
So the first person who did by C3 uh, challenge today was a guy named Justin. And he's uh, from Alabama originally, but uh, is currently living in Hawaii, working for the Kona Coffee uh, Living History Museum. And uh, at this museum, they actually grow Hawaiian chili peppers. And uh, Justin just demolished that pepper like no one's business. Um, wasn't even phased by it. Like he, you can clearly tell that he eats a lot of chili peppers. So that's a video I'm working on right now. Looking forward to when it gets up because I think it's going to be it's a fun one. He was really interesting. The museum sounds amazing and uh, good excuse to go visit California. I think or to go visit Hawaii. Not that not that you need an excuse because it sounds kind of nice. It sounds a lot nice. Howdy. Hey, how are you? Good, you know? Good. What is this? Well, it's a bit of everything. So I'm here with a project called the Humanities Matter Bus Tour and Web Series. And what we're doing is we're, in 2015, December 2015, we're taking a, a trip across North America making a web documentary about the role of the humanities in the 21st century. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and we're spending the year kind of doing pop-up things, talking to people, building community. Cool. And here we just kind of have like a, a little playground so we can make podcasts, record videos, I'm live streaming the whole thing this morning on my laptop, and uh, the thing we're really excited about today is something called the Spicy History Challenge. Uh -huh. So what it is is we're asking people to talk for two minutes on camera about their research or their work or their historical passion, but before they start their two-minute talk, they eat a uh, jalapeno <laughs> pepper. And we've had three people do it today All with right. um, varying degrees of of cool. Uh -huh. um, I think I was the low bar yeah. for, for handling it. Yeah. One person, actually, really interesting guy, he lives in Hawaii, he works for the Kona Coffee Historical Museum. Oh, neat. And they actually grow chili peppers there. Oh, wow. So and he inhaled it and like would have had eaten the rest of the table if, uh, <laughs> if we'd let him. And then there was me who was struggling to right, get right. down. So. Well, I'm going to have to pass. That is fair. <laughs> it's not for everyone. If you know anyone that might be interested, you send them along my way. I will. I definitely will. Awesome. And I'm supposed to actually meet someone. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. It looks like a session may have just ended. So hopefully we get some more people doing the spicy history challenge. Let's get this video up and running. Live stream is, is surprisingly processor intensive, so uh, everything else kind of bogs down in my system right now. Make sure my computer is in a million degrees. So, loyal live stream viewers, thank you for your time. But I think because my computer is about to overheat. And it's also bogging down the video processing. I'm going to end our live stream here today. I'm going to be here for two more hours. So thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you to take the Spicy History Challenge. This is Ryan signing off.